that was pretty strong I have to say and now let's go and connect it in red yes that's also gorgeously strong um, next one next I'll do actually three in one go because the water is staining now I got Mason to play in his room with his toys which is a rare thing because he wants to open all of mommy's cupboards and pull out all of mommy's art supplies and play with everything that is not his okay so the next one I'm just waiting to dry it a little bit more just so it's not too wet um, this is quite interesting here it sort of uh, shows me a very strong granulation very much unlike any other watercolors I have experienced because it's almost like traces of watercolor gathered around here so that's quite interesting okay so I'm going to go into the third color which is the Conacredon Rose I have a nice bright puddle sitting here it's a very intense color wow look at that beauty that is gorgeous isn't it and then next one is that beautiful Conacredon Rust I really didn't expect these colors to be um, granulating for some reason and I like the fact that they are because it's quite beautiful okay so the um, Conacredon Rust was maybe a little bit more watered out so it's not as intense but you can still see that it moves very strongly finally Quinacridon Violet. Wow. That is also very strong. Okay. So, um, what I want to do last is a, a lifting test. So, I will get these uh, to dry fully and then I will basically try to lift a line and see how liftable they are basically because when they're so bright they tend to be staining where you could probably see when I had a little dot of um, nickel quinacridone gold and I tried to lift it um, it was pretty pretty staining and it was just impossible to lift okay so let me go ahead dry them fully and then we'll do the lifting test together Okay, so they're pretty much dry. The way I'm going to do the lifting is just do it on one corner here. I'll make sure I don't have too much water on my brush. And then just sort of try to lift the area like that. And then use a tissue. Because if you are doing like a botanical um, um, illustration, then you're likely to, to need to lift a lot and so if a color is staining you need to to know that because you know you would use then a color that is less staining for example to achieve the the full lifting and so the uh, that's as easy as it is I'm doing a double lift just to, to try and lift as much as I can on the second one hardly anything comes out, it's usually the first one and here you can see even on the first one hardly anything came off at all, it's pretty much as it was before. Hello! Okay Mason, let me finish this and then I'll come have a look what you have built there. Okay. And this is this one lifts really well. And I'm gonna go into it yes. again, lift it again. And this one hardly lifts. It's 
so quite staining as it is to be expected from a violet they tend to be quite staining and especially that it is a quinacridone i mean it lifted some of it but not fully um so that's the lifting okay so let's now have a look at all of them okay so let's have an overview now and um so basically the uh, five colors that are squeezed out here they are still quite glossy um particularly the quinacridone red i don't think uh, this color would dry uh, very well in the near future whatever that might be but the other color seems to have a good kind of um um, texture to them in terms of not being too liquid and so they might not dry fully but I don't think it would be a big problem in terms of putting them in half pans but I haven't tried it so I don't know okay so now let's have a look at the um, the transparency so the quinacridone gold the nickel quinacridone gold doesn't seem to be fully transparent i'd say it's probably a semi-opaque but do keep in mind that i loaded it twice with the watercolor so it's very very intense over here so if you like to use your watercolors quite watered out then um you know it's uh, pretty close to a transparent the rest of them seem to be quite transparent um Probably the one that's most transparent seemed to be the Quinacridon Rose to me. Um, quite granulating as you can see on the second swatches where they were a lot more intense. Um, you can see the granulation coming through in uh, these two colours. Particularly this one seems to be the most granulating which is the Quinacridon Red. And then for lifting... Um, these two colors lifted the least although there was some sort of movement so they're not fully staining but they are quite staining so don't expect to get your um, actually these three the nickel quinacridone gold quinacridone rose and quinacridone violet uh, those three colors are um probably semi-staining um you would not get your paper back to white with these colors and then these two lifted pretty well and then let's look at the dispersion test so all of them are pretty similar um if probably quinacridone violet might be the strongest one um but definitely the most granulating judging even by this uh, test is the quinacridone red because the granulating pot pattern is over here all the way there um so yeah very fun very bright beautiful beautiful colors i love um doing these um type of swatches when i get new watercolors in this um uh, stillman and burn um, sketchbook because of the size of it it's so neat to just have it on my desk and just quickly kind of look through um, the swatches and kind of have like a swatch diary here it's not my swatch book by no means because I have some illustration as well so it's a bit of a kind of like a working kind of a thing where I swatch as well as experiment a little bit um, so yeah it's uh, very handy to have it in this size that's why i like doing it in this sketchbook i apologize for any uh, choo choo train noises but um they are happening next door so um yeah hopefully you can't hear them much okay so after filming the video i realized that i actually completely uh forgot to tell you all the um um information about the paints and uh, so I'm gonna do it now so the nickel quinacridone gold is um, series 3 and let's see on the back of it it says light fastness 1 oh, 
hopefully you can see there we go light fastness one and then it's a, a two pigment mix which is PO48 and PY150 so that's that next one is um, quinacridone red also series 3 they all are series 3 by the way so that's interesting um, means they're good quality obviously light fastness one again and the pigment is a single pigment PR209 so that's that one the third one is quinacridone rose and it's a PV19 single pigment and also light fastness one then the next one is quinacridone rust. Hello, Mason. Yeah, good boy. Um, it is also light fastness one, and it's also a single pigment PO48. And then finally, light fastness one again. So all of them are series three, and all of them are light fastness one. And then it's PV19. So that was single. This is single. That one was single. So I think the only one that was a mix was the nickel uh, quinacridone gold with the two pigments. So they seem to be very um, high in quality. They seem to be done in consideration of watercolorists that always want their not always but um, a lot of us want our watercolors to be uh, transparent vivid and last an eternity if we could so uh, that seems to be ticking all the boxes and yeah I'm very happy uh, of finally having my first five um uh, M. Graham watercolors. I also like the design of the tubes. I haven't mentioned that, but I do like the fact that they're white and with the stripe of the um, of the watercolor. Let's just compare it. They're fairly um, fairly similar to what the actual colors are. Obviously, not identical because it depends on how you do the swatch, what paper you use, etc. So yeah, that is that. And um, thanks for watching and see you soon.